Well, hello everybody and welcome to Fashion And with me, Scott Schiavone, Fashion Curator. This week, we will be looking at the career and legacy of one of the most revered designers of the last century. An Italian in Paris and a close friend and collaborator with the Surrealists, the theme of this episode is fashion and schiaparelli. Italian-born couturier Elsa Schiaparelli is best known for her iconoclastic bravado. Courageous and highly original, Schiaparelli was one of the leading designers of the interwar period. While her contemporaries Gabrielle Chanel and Madeleine Vionnet set the period standards of taste and beauty, Schiaparelli went against the grain, pursuing a more idiosyncratic style. She was as much an artist as she was a fashion designer, saying, Dress designing, incidentally, is to me not a profession, but an art. To communicate her artistic expression, she used a repertoire of creative devices including experimental fabrics, bold prints, opulent embroideries, exposed zippers and bizarre buttons. A close collaborator with the Surrealists, Schiaparelli appropriated their disquieting, dream-based imagery and provocative concepts to create collections that were simultaneously controversial and gorgeous. In this episode, we will be looking at the life and work of Elsa Schiaparelli through four themes. A shocking life, Schiaparelli signatures, Schiaparelli and the artists, and Schiaparelli now. Elsa Schiaparelli was born into a family of aristocrats and intellectuals in 1890 in the Corsini Palace in Rome. Schiaparelli's father was a professor of Oriental literature, her mother a descendant from the Medicis and her uncle a famed astronomer. Despite her desire to become an actress, Schiaparelli studied philosophy and in 1911 published a collection of overtly sensual poems known as Arethusa. In 1913, she attended a conference in London on theology by Count Wilhelm Wendt de Kerler. They later married and the newlyweds left for New York in 1916. Six years later, Elsa requested a divorce and relocated back to Paris. Back in Paris, Elsa accompanied a friend to a fitting at Paul Poiret. She tried on a few designs and sensing that such an atypical woman would be a good advert for his clothes, Poiret lent her several designs. The experience of a couture house with all its luxury lit a spark in Elsa that would prove to be one of the turning points in her life. Schiaparelli founded her own company in 1927 and the following year set up ateliers, salons and offices at number 4 Rue de la Paix. From the offset, Elsa designed for women with strong and independent personalities and her client lists included Wallace Simpson, Marlena Dietrich, Catherine Hepburn, Greta Garbo, Lauren Bacall and Mae West. Sounds like the roll call in Madonna's Vogue. Her reputation was such that in 1934, she became the first female fashion designer to be featured on the cover of American Time magazine. The following year, she moved her couture salon to the Hotel de Fontpertuis at number 21 Place Vendôme and opened a ground floor boutique which stocked costume jewellery, perfume, evening sweaters, skirts, blouses and accessories. In July 1940, while giving a series of lectures in the United States, she was granted the Neiman Marcus Award for Services to Fashion, the first European to be decorated with this prestigious accolade. She returned to Paris, but with the outbreak of World War II, left again for New York, where she remained from May 1941 to July 1945. Whilst abroad, her couture house remained open, but collections were designed by associates and based on house signatures established in previous collections. After World War II ended, Schiaparelli returned to Paris, however, the hard chic look that Schiaparelli had pioneered had been replaced by ultra-feminine styles, which was at odds with her particular brand of creativity. The world of haute couture had changed, and her influence was overshadowed by designers such as Christian Dior and his new look. 
in 1954, despite continuing to create successful collections, Schiaparelli decided to close her business and publish her autobiography entitled Shocking Life. On the state of fashion, Schiaparelli commented that before World War II, people were not afraid to be different. Schiaparelli created a vocabulary of fashion and style that became synonymous with her name. Schiaparelli first captivated the fashion world in 1927 when she presented a sweater with an image of a knotted bow knit into the pattern. This method, known as trompe l'oeil, or in English, trick of the eye, rendered in two dimensions what would normally have been a three-dimensional decoration. These early knitwear designs caused a sensation, and as their popularity grew, the motifs became more varied and included bows, sailor collars, and even fish. They were featured in French Vogue and subsequently launched Schiaparelli's fashion career. Another of Schiaparelli's famous trompe l'oeil designs was her 1938 tears dress. Designed in collaboration with Salvador Dali, Schiaparelli used a trompe l'oeil design to depict skin being torn away to reveal magenta-coloured flesh underneath. Gross, but gorgeous. This dress directly referenced Dali's painting Three Young Surrealist Women Holding in Their Arms the Strings of an Orchestra from 1936. Launched in autumn 1937, Schiaparelli's signature colour was a shade of magenta which she called shocking pink. She described the colour as life-giving, a shocking colour, pure and undiluted. The colour was said to be inspired by Parisian socialite Daisy Fellow's rose-coloured Tête de Bélier or Ram's Head Diamond. When Schiaparelli launched the colour, it was a sensation. An illustration of a Schiaparelli gown in shocking pink by Eric was featured in Vogue's September issue. The colour became synonymous with Schiaparelli's name and shocking pink became part of fashion's lexicon. Schiaparelli was one of the first designers to acknowledge the importance and creative potential of zips. While other designers tried to hide them, Schiaparelli proudly flaunted them, incorporating them into both her day and evening wear designs. Schiaparelli had arrangements with zip manufacturers to promote their fastenings. Eventually, zips became an iconic signature of Schiaparelli's design sensibility. Buttons were also a house speciality and brought out particular spurts of inventiveness. She often collaborated with artists such as Jean Clément or Roger Jean-Pierre to execute her button designs. They appeared in the shape of animals such as fish and butterflies, as well as chessmen, lollipops, circus horses, pianos, harps, mermaids and even trapeze artists. Schiaparelli also embraced traditional methods of decoration and had a long-standing relationship with Maison Lesage, the famous Parisian embroidery firm. This evening wear ensemble from winter 1937 combines Schiaparelli's severe hard chic approach to tailoring with soft silk velvet and exquisite embroideries. It features gilt metal thread, diamante and sequins in an elaborate scrolling design of flowers, leaves and tendrils, topped off with stunning star-shaped metal buttons in a vibrant pink. Schiaparelli's intricate and quirky embroideries were exquisite and considered the height of luxury haute couture. Inspired by historical silhouettes, throughout her career Schiaparelli referenced the bustles of the 1870s and 1880s. Unlike historical bustles, Schiaparelli's were achieved not through wiring or boning, but by the fabric alone. She embraced the bustle fully in her summer 1939 collection, where she used striped fabrics and gathered and draped bustles, accessorising them with black lace or long gloves. Her later collections also featured bustles. This dress from 1948 exhibits her enduring interest in the bustle form. 
the dramatic gathering of the fabric into the bow at the back and the flare train is indicative of Schiaparelli's interest in the female form and how fabric can enhance the body beneath. The swagger of her broad-shouldered suits, the rawness of her furs and embroidery, and the tough attitude towards fashion was described by her contemporaries as hard chic. Schiaparelli's aesthetic used severe tailoring mixed with a feminine edge and was applied to both her day and evening ensembles. The epitome of Schiaparelli's hard chic was a tweed check suit tailored to sculpt the body with broad shoulders and built up sleeves, tight waist and jutting patch pockets to emphasise the hips. Beginning with her circus collection, presented for summer 1938, and for five subsequent seasons, Schiaparelli was at her most creative. The circus collection was described by Schiaparelli herself as her most riotous and swaggering collection. Boldly coloured printed fabrics with circus inspired designs were used for both day and evening wear, and bolero jackets featured richly embroidered elephants and acrobats swinging from tight ropes. The Zodiac collection for winter 1938 was inspired by her famous uncle, the astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli. This collection drew on stories of the mysterious world of the solar system and included the iconic Zodiac jacket made of midnight blue silk velvet and sprinkled with beadwork stardust, silver and gold planets, rhinestone crescent moons, swirling comets and shooting stars. The twelve signs of the zodiac appear in gold at the centre front and the left shoulder was embroidered with the constellation Ursa Major, Schiaparelli's personal emblem. This collection also featured the Phoebus cape, embroidered with a golden rayed sun representing Phoebus Apollo, the emblem of Louis XIV, the Sun King. The music collection from autumn 1939 featured music boxes concealed in hats, bags and belts. Gently flaring skirts of organdy chiffon and tulle on youthful dance dresses were embroidered with violins, flutes or pianos or bars of music and gloves were embroidered with tambourines. Other themed collections during this period included the Pagan and Commedia dell'arte collections. Uh. In the 1930s, setting herself apart from her contemporaries, Elsa Schiaparelli made close connections to the art world, especially the Surrealist movement. Jean Cocteau and Salvador Dali were amongst the artists who collaborated with her. <laughs> For Schiaparelli's Autumn Winter 1937 collection, two Jean Cocteau drawings featured on an evening coat and a grey linen jacket transformed into embroidery by Maison Massage. These designs have become amongst the most recognisable of Schiaparelli. Now part of the collection at the v &A, this coat perfectly blends Schiaparelli's design aesthetic with Cocteau's extraordinary ability to create form by the use of a single line. Of all the artists that Schiaparelli was involved with, none had such a profound influence on her as Salvador Dali. Schiaparelli's butterfly's dress with evening coat from summer 1937 uses the surrealist symbol for change as the subject of the print. Using insects as decoration for evening wear was an unexpected choice but was clearly surrealist inspired as Dali often used symbols of transformation and change in his work including butterflies. The wide meshed evening jacket worn over Schiaparelli's butterfly dress is reminiscent of a butterfly net. Catch the wee beasties! Schiaparelli's lobster dress, also from 1937, once again combines the realms of art, fashion and nature. The lobster motif came from a theme that Dali had previously cultivated in his own work, which included his 1936 lobster telephone. Schiaparelli's lobster dress attained widespread notoriety after Cecil Beaton photographed Wallace Simpson wearing the gown for Vogue in 1937. The lobster motif was printed onto the off-white silk organza and the dress with an A-line silhouette had a sheer coral insert below the bust to create a slight empire waistline. 
The Skeleton Dress was potentially one of Schiaparelli's most controversial collaborations with Dali. Part of her 1938 circus collection, this sinister black skeleton evening dress with its padded representations of human bones was an outrage. The skeleton dress was designed to hug the body and act like a second skin, forcing the bones of the gown to protrude even more prominently. Schiaparelli used a quilting technique known as trapunto. The bone design was stitched in outline through two layers of fabric, then cotton wads and inserted through the back to bring the design into relief on the front. Schiaparelli said that clothes had to be architectural, that the body must never be forgotten, and it must be used as a frame is used in a building. While the body frame was certainly not forgotten here, Schiaparelli and Dali also collaborated on her infamous black hat in the form of a shoe with a shocking pink velvet heel. After Schiaparelli closed her business in 1954, the company lay dormant until the Schiaparelli archive and rights to the name were purchased in 2006 by Italian businessman Diego Della Valle. In 2012, the Schiaparelli Couture House reopened at number 21 Place Vendôme, the very place Elsa Schiaparelli had left it. The brand invited designer Christian Lacroix in 2013 to create an old couture tribute collection to celebrate the life and work of Elsa Schiaparelli. Lacroix, known for his combination of luxury and indifference, presented 18 couture creations at the Musée des Arts Décrotique upon a rotating mirrored carousel. In January 2014, the house presented its first haute couture collection since 1954 under the creative direction of Marco Zanini and was awarded with the official haute couture label by Francis Chambre Syndicale. After just two seasons, Zanini parted ways with Schiaparelli and Bertrand Gaillon took over as creative director. Gaillon said, The Schiaparelli legacy is extraordinary, but my work is not necessarily defined by it. What is key is the spirit of what Schiaparelli stands for. It feels very organic without being an obsession. However, after a run of successful collections, Gaillon parted ways with the brand and the relatively unknown designer Daniel Rosebury took over as artistic director in 2019. On the eve of his debut show, Rosebury said of his collection, I didn't want it to be nostalgic. During the show, he sat at an artist's drafting table, sketching designs as the models walked the runway, wearing the designs he was sketching, proclaiming himself as the brand's new creative force. However, there were glimpses of Schiaparelli's surrealism, such as scarlet acrylic false nail gloves transformed into hats, appliques and earrings. Courageous and highly original, Italian-born Elsa Schiaparelli was one of the leading designers of the 1930s. Schiaparelli's approach to women and the clothes they wore went against the grain of mainstream fashion in the pursuit of a more idiosyncratic style. Her collaboration with the Surrealists set her apart from her contemporaries and blended the boundaries between art and fashion. Throughout her career, Schiaparelli developed and established solid house signatures that were not only the key to her success, but also a contributing factor to her fall out of fashion. However, Schiaparelli will always be remembered as creating garments that were always simultaneously controversial and gorgeous. Well that's it for today's episode, I hope you enjoyed the iconoclastic bravado and unrestrained originality of the life and work of Elsa Schiaparelli. All 8 episodes of Season 1 of Fashion and are available to watch, along with previous episodes of Season 2, such as Fashion and Versailles. Links to these will be appearing in the bottom corners of your screen in just a sec. Please comment, like and share and please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing from Fashion and with me, Scott Schiavone, Fashion Curator.